Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the uh, Moribund Conquest Build Combo. Uh, what we're seeing here is a serious case of builder's block. I apologize for the lateness of this video, but it took me way, way too many tries and too long to do this. So the intro part here is you're seeing my third attempt at doing something with this uh, command post building. I wanted to, you know, make it bigger or expand it somehow and I mean after three attempts, I had cobbled together this monstrosity, you know, and this is one of those things where uh, this is a rare occurrence for me is where I build something and I look at it and I'm like, okay, that's almost right. That's not quite what I'm after. It's really close. So I ended up tearing it down uh, three times. I worked on it Thursday and I worked on it Friday and I worked on it Saturday morning. And then I just said to hell with it. I'm not even going to bother with that. I'm going to punt and I'm just going to make a barracks. So I'm going to do what I normally do with these types of settlement things is when I build an original building, I leave it alone until I get more stuff around it. I had forgotten that that's one my tactic because working with Conquest in Moribund World, it really changes things, you know. It changes the way I uh, approach the thing and apparently what it's been doing is changing my methods and that's a bad thing because I, I fumbled around and thrashed around way, way, way too much with this particular thing. Now. Uh, if you, if you haven't been watching the streams, if you've only been watching the, the build videos, you can see over there on the left that I've got uh, a wall working. There's a, a guard tower over there, an entranceway, and more fencing going up. So what I'm going to try to do, at least for the foreseeable future, since this build is going to take me a long time, a lot longer than I was expecting or anticipating, is I'm going to do live building on Tuesdays and then do more fixed building like this for the Friday slash Saturday slash weekend slash I don't even know when I'm going to be able to do these things because this is, uh, it's really time consuming. I'm, I'm unsure why. I mean, part of it, of course, is the fact that Conquest has to go in and out of the build menu to uh, populate the workbench and give you your materials and stuff like that. But yeah, so that's the, uh, that's the plan. And of course, I've got the clear shells working here. So that's why the sky is so nice and uh, clear. I figured that was a, a reasonable a reasonable dodge to do while I was actually building because building in the murk and the and the mist and the rain and the rad storms it's just you can't see anything you know now when I do the tour you know yeah I'll leave the regular weather on but for the building we're gonna do this so uh, what we're gonna build here today is a barracks living quarters uh, you know thing for our guards and our like permanent our permanent residents uh, I'm gonna start aggressively editing these things when I have a bunch of like here a bunch of thrashing around where I fiddled and fussed with this stupid second foundation to get it level I mean I literally wasted nine minutes ten minutes doing that and that's just like the most boring crap ever so I'm going to do when I'm right whenever in future in future he said trying to complete a sentence in future if I find in my videos and my build videos that I am fruitlessly thrashing around trying to do one thing for more than five minutes, I'm going to cut it. I'm just going to slash it out. And we're going to transition from when I started thrashing around with it to when I finally got what I wanted to work to work. So uh, you're going to see a lot more heavy editing on these, especially with these, because I mean, this video here is uh, it's something like 20 minutes, but the raw footage is almost six hours just from, you know, the, the failed attempts and the inability to do the inability of the, to get the thing to look like I wanted it to, the inability to get it to look like, to look right, you know, to not look dumb, you know, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it, but when I build, you know, I mean, I've probably talked about this before, but whenever I build, I don't have like a plan in mind, you know, I don't have a, I want this specific thing and da 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 it's like, okay, I want something that's a living quarters for these guys, what's it going to have? Well, it's probably going to have beds. What else is it going to have? I don't know. Uh, maybe it's going to have a recreation area, a resting area, a kitchen. Maybe it's going to be fully featured. Maybe it's going to have, you know, an administrative. I don't know what it's going to have. You know, I have to look at the final building to know what it's going to be. But when I build, I throw things at the problem and look at it until it feels like it should. If that, I don't think that makes any sense. But it's not a, a, a deliberate, premeditated kind of... Uh, kind of process it's more throw things at what I think I want it to look like until it starts to look like I want it to do <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense at all 
But uh, normally that works really well because I've got a fairly good feel for the, the pieces and the mechanics and the physics and the, the engine and this, that, and the other. So, and I've got, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot of builds. So I've done a lot of this before. So in general, when I throw pieces at a problem, I usually get it pretty close on the first try. Maybe I have to refit it like I did the, uh, that little hut down there at uh, Finch Farm in a previous video in this series. But sometimes, sometimes I just, it just does not work, you know, like this thing here. I, I was, I went the wrong direction. I tried to redo the command post before I had any other buildings here. And I'm thinking in hindsight, of course, of course it's in hindsight, but I'm thinking in hindsight that that's got to be one of the last things I do because the command post is going to be informed by whatever it's, you know, over, whatever's commanded, you know, whatever it's, whatever the structures are here when I need to place it. So we're going to do normal, you know, make funky directions, different elevations, patch holes with just whatever I can find, get it to stick in there, yada, yada, yada. So uh, one thing I did want to mention about the streaming thing is I really don't like missing questions or comments, and I don't like missing when people come in. I, I don't. So uh, if you are a person who watches the stream and you ask something or you say something and I don't, you know, greet you or welcome you or nobody says anything, uh, do me a favor and ask again. Say it again. I don't really mind. I just, I don't want to miss anything. So uh, a couple, in the last one, I missed a couple of questions. So I'm going to try and address those here. That'll give me something to talk about while I flail around with this building, trying to get it to look moderately junky and scrappy while, you know, being fortified. Because of course the whole hilltop is going to be the thing. Now, I think in the future, I'm going to, you know, just go around the edge there that you're seeing the back edge and just put more buildings in there. But we're going to need a farmer's hut. I'm going to try and put a shooting range in here and uh, fence the whole thing off. And that's going to be interesting. So anyway, one of the questions that I had last time that I did not answer sufficiently was, do I use manufacturing? And I do not. I usually don't use manufacturing. Um, I don't really have a factory mentality. That's not something that I would want to build or nothing that my you know, scrappy ass motif would tend to support. And from a functionality standpoint, I mean, I, sure, I can build stuff with it. I can make ammunition and make, you know, food products or whatever. But I mean, I'm already scavenging like crazy and I've got mods if I need them. So there's really no, there's nothing functionally there that I, I would really use them for. So in general, no, I don't use manufacturing. Um, I've played with it. I've experimented with it a couple of times, but uh, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't really use it all that much. And uh, you're going to see me transition here because the weather started to get nasty, so I had to go shut off the shut off the thing here. Uh, what else did I do? I I forgot one of the questions are there. Oh my goodness, um, stuff like that. And okay, yeah, we transitioned to get the weather back up. Uh, other questions I had were oh god, now now I forgot. I should have checked it, but it's on the other system, and I didn't think about it. So anyway, um, if you're in the stream and you do ask something and I don't answer it, please ask again. <laughs> please feel free to ask it again. Uh, I, I don't, uh, I'm not ignoring it. I'm not trying to do it, but it's like when there's so much chat and so much crosstalk going on uh, and I'm trying to, you know, actually play or build or whatever. Uh, I have a tough time splitting my attention. It's easy for me to focus when I'm doing only one thing at a time. So, um, yeah. So what I'll do is for the next stream, um, which will be Tuesday, I don't think I'm going to stream on Sunday this week because of course it's E3, Bethesda's going to be doing their thing at 10 o'clock. Pacific, which of course is, you know, noon central, which is uh, the exact time I, uh, I stream. So we're going to probably skip that this week. I may do it, but if it doesn't happen tomorrow, it's because of E3. And what I'll try to do is write other questions down and answer them as we go through. Uh, I'll pick them up and answer them in the same, like, segment. So if somebody asks me something on Tuesday, I'll do it on Tuesday, Sunday, on Sunday, and like that. Uh, in other news, was this, as I thrash around with this roof piece and it won't go where I want it to go because it doesn't like that top slot, the bottom slot where I want it to go. Um, thank you to Draco Invictus for uh, his streams uh, on State of Decay 2. I was not going to get this game, but uh, from watching it, it looks like it's fairly stable and um, it's definitely getting patched pretty frequently. So they're fixing the problems as it goes. So I went ahead and got it uh, yesterday and it took entirely too long to download. So I'll be playing that. Probably will not be, you know, doing any recording with that one. That'll just be my stress relief, <laughs> my stress relief thing. And here's another cut as I thrash around with the scaffolding, trying to get this thing to work. And we'll put it up there and we're gonna cut really quick, I think, right there, yeah. 
So six more minutes gone, as I couldn't get the scaffolding, the scaffolding supports to snap to the, the single piece. And then I did a double piece, and then I did a short one, and da 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 da. So, um, yeah, so State of Decay is pretty fun so far. Um, I had forgotten just how frantic the beginning is because everything's going wrong all the time and you're just dealing with no food, no medicine, no water, no morale, no this, no that, no people, everything's getting attacked. It's like blah, blah, blah. So it's coming along though. Um, the mechanics are pretty much the same and uh, they seem to have improved the uh, controller latency. I have not yet died to not being able to um, accurately or you know, precisely do what I told my character to do what I wanted to do. One thing it could use though is a better tutorial. A lot of the stuff that it throws at you isn't really explained, you know, like the plague heart thing. I had to go kill one of those things and all you need explosive. I'm like, okay, great. So this guy offered to sell me a couple of these little soda crayon grenades. I'm like, okay, well, he's got two grenades. That's all going to be enough. Well, no, it's totally not enough. Um, it would be nice if uh, it had warned you saying, hey, you're probably going to need more explosives than this. You might want to, you might want to arm up a little bit, or you know, like that. Um, I do miss my flying kick from the previous one because one of my favorite tactics, of course, was to knock them down. You know, just kick them over and then just smash their heads in with the, with the special finishing move, because that you know saves weapon wear and tear. Because <laughs> I don't have to stand and whack at them like I'm trying to chop down a tree. But you can still do it. You just kick them twice and hit them with like a tire iron, and they just sort of stagger. Then you can knock them over and just smash their faces in. But um, yeah, so far so good. It's it's interesting. It's you know it's state of decay. And we're gonna put this thing up here, because this place, of course, is going to be a fortified encampment. It's gonna be a Minuteman training base and a forward outpost and like that. So we're gonna have guards and we're gonna have a, a, a little bit of crops with you know the fully featured stuff because they're gonna to need to be you know self sufficient out here, at the ass end of nowhere. Now this location, if you did not tune in the last time or you only saw the stream where I had started building over there by those cabins, this place is a little bit to the northeast of that. This place is almost due east of the electrical club. It is due north of the robotics, the robotics uh, ground. Scrap Palace is kind of down the street there. And uh, at the end, I look over the water. And if you look over the water to the northeast, you can see Igri Tours. This is on a little, the, the road kind of turns here. So it seemed like a great place to have, you know, good, good sight lines, good traffic, Easy for them to get in and out of and um, stuff like that. I'm trying to figure out how to patch that hole. So, yeah, um, I did solve the conquest problem. The duplication, triplication problems I was having were just filling the work and filling the workbench. It turns out that the uh, I had a mod called Scrupulous Scrapping in there. And what Scrupulous Scrapping does is it changes the properties of a lot of junk. Like, I don't know, maybe 80% of it. Gives it different values, different weights, different material out, you know, different material compositions and stuff like that. And uh, if you put, if you have scrupulous scrapping and you have conquest, you have to put conquest first, because if you put scrupulous scrapping first, conquest does not know what to do with this modified junk, so it doesn't know how to delete it because it's not. I don't know. I'm guessing that perhaps the original mod author of scrupulous scrapping changed the names or something, or altered their properties in such a way that Conquest does not recognize it as valid junk. So it just completely goes berserk and keeps filling it up and filling up and filling it up. But I hadn't really noticed how bad it was until I, you know, fi figured it out and put it in the right place. And instead of, you know, 11,000 wood or 22,000 or 71,000, I only had 3,000. <laughs> I, I had almost no wood. So that tells you how much, uh, that tells you how much the uh, scrupulous scrapping modifies those values. So I had to take about, I don't know, an hour and a half, go unlock Sanctu go unlock Spectacle Island because I'd never even been there. Unlock it and then just scrap all the wood and bring it back. So that was um, another, you know, hour and a half, two hours of creating this video where I didn't actually have anything to record. But this little place is looking pretty good. I, I've got a good, I've got a good uh, chunk of land there surrounded that we're going to be uh, doing stuff with. Uh, I don't know how, I mean, I'm going to make a shooting range, but I don't really know if I want to have a backstop or if I want to have, uh, just let them shoot over into the lake, you know, just kind of aim it over that way and let the stray bullets just fly. Cause I mean, really who cares? There's nothing out here because I mean, a shooting range, people, whenever they do them right in the game, they, they put a backstop and it's flat or they put, you know, junk walls in there. And, uh, if you've ever been to a real shooting range, you will know that a flat backstop is uh, really dangerous. 
as is a backstop that has you know different angles because you know ricochets bolts go flying off everywhere you know especially when you're closer than say 30 feet or so and this is of course a limited area so i'm going to have to uh, do it because i don't have any i don't have any um, like concrete textures that are like a 45 degree angle so i can make that you know the 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 angled backstop where it all it funnels everything towards the center right there's the angle away from the shooter and so that way any any you know blowback will go into the back of the backstop it won't go flying back out towards the uh, the front of the lane so i'm gonna have to figure something out there i might just let them shoot off into the wilderness though because there's really nothing out here you know i mean you look at the lake over there there's nothing in that direction so i can just have them you know put like a chain link fence up there and just let them shoot through it who cares but as always we're going to put another uh, guard post up here and i think that double guard post that i have in the front i think that's going to go away i'm pretty sure i'm going to take that and make that one guard post instead of two and just rebuild that whole front wall because once I built the wall around what's going to be the field and the lower entrance that faces the street, I realized I really didn't need two guards looking that way. I only need one. And since Conquest has a limit of 10 people, I don't want it to have, you know, half of them being guards. That doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't work. I am gonna need a bigger bunkhouse though, because the bunkhouse here that I'm standing on only is only gonna, um, only sleeps four, because it's gonna be for the guards, right? So I'm going to have to have a visitor's bunkhouse or a, you know, a trainee's bunkhouse or, or something of that nature elsewhere. And it's going to be, I might just use a military cots for that. Because that seems like it would be a good idea for this sort of temporary. I mean, because you would come down here for training and, you know, rotate in and out on patrol. You wouldn't live here like the guards do. I mean, the guards could rotate out as well, but you really don't want them to do that. You want them to stay put so they get a feel for what normal is here, you know, so that they don't get all excited when they hear some shooting going on down the scrap piles because there's always shooting down the scrap piles because super guns are down there. And Raiders and the Brotherhood are always, are always down there, you know, mixing it up. So you wouldn't want a newbie going, oh, my God, sound the alarm. They're shooting. It's like, yeah, no, dude, that's the super guns. Don't worry about it. Until you actually see one coming up, don't even sweat it. They are, they're always down there. Oh, that was one of the other questions I just remembered. Um, from a lore perspective... Does it make sense to militarize the Minutemen? Does it make sense? And uh, see, this is where it gets weird. Because from a game mechanic standpoint, from a what Preston has said standpoint, from a history of the things that we know about them in the game standpoint, they weren't ever that militarized. They had a very, very tiny command structure. They had very, very few officers. It was, it was mostly a volunteer militia. You know, it was like, it was like the farmers who keep the guns in the walls and when stuff happens, they grab granddad's rifle and they go protect the settlement. They go protect the food. They don't have organized patrols. They don't have a command structure. They don't have communications. I mean, they have radio freedom, but that's more of a broadcast. That's not a two way thing. You can't call, or at least I've never seen them do it. There's no like infrastructure for that sort of thing. So, um, and the Minutemen have always been reactive. You know, they always react to things. They don't, they're not proactive like the Brotherhood. Now we're going to go ahead and switch out, do the weather. They don't go flush Raider outposts. They don't keep their areas clear. They only respond when they're attacked. And that, that doesn't strike me as a military force. It just does not. I mean, maybe like a National Guard thing? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of, but it's not an active military military. You know, it doesn't, I don't know, it just doesn't make sense to me that they would be that. Now, an argument could be made that they could be that. But, you know, when you're the general, you can just organize them and get them settled up and, and you know, put them in, put them all in armor. But even when you do that, your patrols are going to be guys in street clothes where, with pipe pistols. So they're all clearly volunteers. So, okay, so here's the barracks. Here's the final bunkhouse thing. Uh, what I did is I built it and then... I went ahead and decorated it, you know, put in some put in some flavor, and I just want to look at it in the daytime to show you all what we're doing here. Um, so I tore down the wall here that was separating the outpost from the main yard because I don't need it anymore, obviously. And this has a significant lack of fencing around the outside, but for now, it's sitting on top of the hill, and I always like to go down to the bottom to a lower spot and look up at it to see what it looks like. And it looks it looks pretty formidable. It looks 
like it's sitting on the hilltop, like it commands the heights, and that's what I'm after. But we're definitely going to need to put some uh, put some fencing around this thing. We'll do that in a in a later episode, or I'll do it in the stream because it's pretty boring work. And uh, we'll go up to the top here, up to our um, our watch post where our one of our guards stands. And there's going to be another observation tower on top of the command post, I think. I'm, I'm still leaning towards that, but I'm not entirely sure. And this, of course, again, huge, hugely well good sight lines. You could see forever from up here. And if I put the fencing down the hill and make it double height, that you know, about halfway down the hill, that'll keep enemies from climbing up, but still let him or her see and shoot over. But yeah, you can see Eager Tours over there on the left, and there's downtown. So that's where we're at in terms of uh, the location. You can see the robotics place across the street there in the distance. So, in their living quarters, I went ahead and gave them their first ever exercise area. Put it right here in the front. They can, you know, lift some weights, do this. I'll dress this up later with, you know, towels and weights and stuff like that. And a couple of gathering areas uh, with some supplies, food and ammunition and whatever. I figured I'd put the stove there because that way it's, you know, open to the air and the, the smoke can go outside. And some, uh, the barracks, the resting quarters, a locker for everybody with their own beds. They'll probably get shelves and under bed storage at some point. But this is a nice little gathering area, a nice little R&R &R and uh, community gathering and uh, stuff like that. And I'll probably add some more stuff to it, chairs and details and knickknacks, and we'll decorate it later on and blah, 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 blah. But that's all we got for this one, folks. Uh, next time, we're probably gonna keep going on this, or I might go back to Settlement and Survival and bust out Overland Station and try and start working on that. Put it right here. And if you like the content, please go ahead and click that like button. If you'd like want to see more, hit subscribe. And I want to thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.